Ghetto Bible Study, we're in Proverbs 7. And the title of today's message is, Prostitution, You're Dead to Me. On and on. You got your chef, you got your, your doctor, you got your, your maid, you got your, your love maker, which is the 20% that this prostitute is offering, but she's offering it in a way that wifey is not. Because by the time wifey is ready to take care of that, she's not dressed up like this woman is she's not you know beautiful to perfection um face beat with a freakum dress dress on no she got on a dingy t-shirt um some holy socks and some loose pajamas but it is what it is at the end of the day she's still your wife it's still love and it still can be amazing but wifey is exhausted because of the 80%. Now, it's wrong for Le- to leave her for the 20 that this thought or this prostitute is offering. It's just wrong. And your world will be turned upside down if you choose this 20% over your 80. That's what your life is going to be from that point forward. It's going to be 20% of what it could be when it's 100 with your wife, especially when it's done right in marriage. You're tuned in to Ghetto Bible Study, a dope way to read the Bible. I'm your host, Proverbs 31 Mom. And today's Proverbs 7 takes us into a story about a man getting caught up in a deadly trap. Now we've heard about the trap of adulteresses, cheating on your wife, and other ungodly things. But this particular trap is a trap of prostitution. Proverbs 31. Mom! All right, so this is Solomon giving his last, you know, words of advice or wisdom to his son. And this kicks off talking about, you know, how he needs to remember um, his wise words, never ever forget them. And then the point about if he actually obeys, then he'll really live. He'll really live his best life. These particular words are what's going to keep him safe from prostitutes, other men's wives, or women who are out there to basically get him or cause him to sin. These are some very, very important words to remember, never forget, and actually obey, meaning apply them when necessary. All right, here's the story. Once I was looking out of the window of my house, I saw a group of men who didn't know very much. Among them was a boy who was not wide. He was walking down the street near the house of a certain woman and he passed her house. It was in the evening after it was dark. So we know what happened when the sun goes down. Then she met him. Her clothes were like those that an adulteress wear. Oh yeah, she had a freaking dress on and she knew just what she wanted to do. Verse 11, she was a bad woman. She never did what she should do. Her feet never stayed at home. She was out there in them streets when she should have been in the house taking care of the kids or cleaning up while her husband was away. Verse 12, that's how we know it was a prostitute because sometimes she stood in the streets. You know where you see them dots. You know where you, you know where to find the prostitutes. They hanging out in the streets. And sometimes she stood in the marketplace. So sometimes she's in the parking lot. She, where everybody go parking lot pimping, you, you can find some prostitutes there too, son. Oh, and this part, this is a, a given. She waited at the corners of the street. So where do you find prostitutes, son? <laughs> Usually in them streets, in the parking lots, or on the corners. That's usually where they hang. Verse 13, so the young man walks up and she put her arms around a young man and she begins to kiss him. This is the part that gets me. 
she claims that she knows God because she tells him, I have, I have some meat that I've prepared from the sacrifice, like some leftover meat. I gave some meat to God. I did what I was supposed to do. I made my promises to God, and now I have some leftover meat. So come hang out with me. I'm a godly woman. I did what I did. I prayed today. You know, I went to church today. I'm, I'm cool. I'm godly. I know God. I, I'm safe. So come and come to lunch with me. Come have coffee with me. You got to pee? Okay. Verse 15. So I came out to meet you. I was looking for you, and now I found you. Verse 16. I have covered my bed with cloths from Egypt. Oh, that's that silk good stuff. She, she hot and ready like a hot pocket. <laughs> and the color of it and the smell of it are beautiful. Verse 18. Come. Let me lie in your arms all night. That's what they say, right? Sound like a lyric from an R&B song. We can enjoy ourselves with love all night. Now, this is the Bible, and that's about as funky as they can get. It ain't, you know, nearly as colorful as the words that we hear in today's music. You know, they don't leave nothing out. It, this, is, this is more beautiful. You know what I mean? <laughs> Back in the day, it was more poetic. But nowadays, they just straight point to the to the point and i ain't gotta i ain't gotta you know quote no lyrics from no songs for y'all to know what i'm talking about verse 19 she goes on to say my husband is not here he's gone away on a long journey so we got time he took plenty of money with him so he ain't coming back for like two whole weeks we straight and that's part of the trap it's, it's always set up to seem like it's something that you can get away with it's no way possible you can get caught so if you can't get caught, you can do it. Enjoy ourselves for this one night and, and you're good. But the crazy thing is, and this is what Solomon is telling his son, you know, God sees everything. No human may see anything, but God sees it. And that type of guilt is going to be on your heart forever. It's going to weigh you down. And what happens in the dark comes to light. So eventually... It's going to hurt you. It's going to destroy you. It's going to kill you. It's going to kill your family. And anything that was blessed by marriage is going to completely disrupt it and destroy it. Verse 21. She tried to cause the young man to sin with her many words. Oh, so she, I mean, she bringing on game strong. She said very nice things to him. Now, husbands, this is where... A lot of you might fall short you fall for that 20 percent that your wife is not doing so this prostitute is offering the 20 percent that wifey is probably not doing but wifey is offering 80 percent wifey is a mother to your children she's wiping butts she's wiping noses she's wiping tears and drying eyes Almost done. so the 80 percent wifey is being a mom to your children she's giving birth to your children she's pregnant with your children she's in labor with your children um she's cleaning the house so she's she's a maid uh she's cooking dinners breakfast lunch dinner and snacks so wifey is a chef she's giving medicine when when the babies are sick when you are not feeling well she's taking care of you so she's a doctor and the list goes on and on you got your chef you got your your doctor you got your your maid you got your your love maker which is the 20 percent that this prostitute is offering but she's offering it in a way that wifey is not because by the time wifey is ready to take care of that she's not dressed up like this woman is she's not you know, beautiful to perfection, um, face beat with a freakum dress, dress on. No, she got on a dingy t-shirt, um, some holy socks, and some loose pajamas. But it is what it is. <laughs> At the end of the day, she's still your wife. It's still love, and it still can be amazing. But wifey is exhausted because of the 80%. Now, it's wrong for Le to leave her for the 20 that this thought or this prostitute is offering is just wrong. And your world will be turned upside down if you choose this 20% over your 80. That's what your life is gonna be from that point forward. It's gonna be 20% of what it could be when it's 100 with your wife, especially when it's done right 
in marriage. Okay, so continuing on with verse 21, she did everything that she wanted to this, this man. 22, immediately he followed her like an ox that men kill for food. He was like a fool that people tie with chains to punish. Verse 23, then they killed that man with sharp sticks. He was like a bird that hurries into a net. He did not know that this could be the end of his life. And sadly, so many men that pick up a prostitute and do what they want and think that wifey won't find out and nobody knows, they don't know that this is ultimately the end of their lives. Verse 24, so my sons, listen to me. Listen to what I say. Now, again, this is coming from Solomon, the wisest man on earth. Here's what he has to say. Verse 25, do not love that kind of woman. Do not go after her, especially don't marry her. Because if you do, what she's doing to her previous husband, she's going to do to, to you. And let's reverse that. Women, same thing with a man. If you mess around with a married man, guess what? And you marry him, he's going to do that to you. So from the wisest person who ever existed, do not go after a person like that. Verse 26. Now, we're talking about this woman, but, and it says she has caused the death of many men, but people like that, cheaters who cheat on their husbands or wives or prostitutes, they have caused the death of families, of marriages, of lives. So much so that it's too, much, it's too many to even count. This is biblical, it's written. You may not see this part, but God sees everything. So he's telling us now, this is what happened to people who sleep around with prostitutes, especially when they married. Last verse, verse 27. If you go to her house, you are on a path to the world of dead people. You know how many people are dead on earth and they live their lives numb, trying to excuse or hide what they've done? You want a life of abundance and that's what God promises when we do it right, when we take heed to his word, when we use his wisdom and apply it. You get to truly live and enjoy life. You don't want to live your life with these secrets and these skeletons haunting you. And the very last line says, it's a quick way to die. So to sum it all up, this advice from Solomon to his son, or if we're applying it, this advice from us parents to our children, we're teaching them not only about cheaters or messing around with married men or women, but about prostitutes and what happens to people who sleep around with prostitutes now culturally you think you know as a man you pick up a woman you do what you do you done came up you please yourself and it is what it is you move on but what's not taught is what's taught in this message today it's the path of death it's leading you to a world of dead people you are dead on earth if you're living that life. Why? Because you're missing out on all of the life that God promises when you do things his way. When you don't and you do things this way, you are dead to him. Point blank, period. God's words, Thank not you. mine. So I know it's tough to hear these type of words, but it's necessary. And it's more necessary for us parents to pass this on to our kids so that they do not get caught up in these traps when they grow up to be young adults like this young man that we're talking about in this proverb today. I appreciate you guys joining me today on Ghetto Bible Study. Please like, share, and subscribe if you learned something. Have a blessed day. We know what happened. No! Come here. Come here. Come here, come here. You look crazy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you done with the swimming? Yeah. You done? You're not about to get the iPad. Mommy is using the iPad. I'm using it. You can't have the iPad. No iPad for Ruby. iPad. Mommy iPad and then Ruby. Mommy iPad. Is, is mommy's iPad. I'm sorry.
Wait, Ruby, please wait. Can you wait till mommy get done? I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished, Ruby, and then you can have the iPad, okay? Go, go play with, um, um, go watch TV in the room, okay? Go TV room. Yeah, go watch it in the room. Which one? Which one? In, in Ruby's room. This. Go. Uh -oh. I, I have to finish recording, Ruby. Mommy is almost done, baby. Almost. And then I'm going to give you the iPad, okay? Almost done, and then iPad. That's the end of that. Just keep it outside in the sun and just let it... No, keep it outside and try to get all of the water out. Shake the water out. Not in the house. And try to keep it in the sun. No, put some clothes on right now. Clothes on, put some clothes on. And the color of it, no, 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 no. Oh my goodness, Lord. Let me finish and then I'll give you the iPad. Let me finish. Finish?